Okay, I think I'm ready. Not sure. Okay, what's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna be filming a very stressful video for me because whew, I gotta catch my breath. I've been running around trying to set up the little camera angle. If this makeup turns into like a raccoon face, it's because this eye has not stopped watering for like two days. I think it's allergies because it's just nonstop watering and it's very weird, but my whole makeup on this face has just been like turning like black and black and I'm just trying to clean it and it's a mess. So if that happens, just ignore it. <laughs> um, oh shoot, Daisy. Can you bring my ring? It's in the bathroom. Okay. Just my ring. Oh. So, welcome back to my channel. I appreciate you guys uh, coming and clicking this video. Today's video is like, you thank you ma'am. The other one too. Oh my God. Today's video is one that I've been putting off for a very long time because it can get very nitpicky. Um, people are very like emotionally attached to the way we create the medicine that we put inside our bodies. And I totally respect that. That's why for a very long time I have been like putting off this video. Um, but it's been like requested over and over in my Instagram DMs and I just feel like I should totally do it. And I know that everybody is taught differently by their a credo nurse or whatever provider you know gives you your medicine and has taught you how to do it but um i'm gonna show you the way my nurse taught me and also like like just things that i've kind of adopted in like the years that i've been doing it i've been making iv therapy medication for five years and at first it was extremely terrifying um, one of those life choices where it's kind of like, I'm going to either have to learn how to do this or I'm not going to be here very long. It's like I had a very, um, hard decision to make whenever I was faced with the IV therapy. Like I said in my previous videos, I basically woke up with this in my chest. So it was kind of like, I can quit on myself and not learn the process and basically put it on somebody else to keep me alive and have somebody else feel responsible for learning how to make the medication or I can mm, t like be my own hero and just be accepting learn how to make the medication and go with the flow and this was my new flow in life meaning like these were the things that were put in front of me and I either had a choice to like go with it or not and I decided to go with it and teach myself and I said like previous videos I had a spiral notebook and I wrote down everything like tediously I mean literally from rub the top of the vial for 20 seconds you know um just anything that I had I would write down on the spiral and I would just practice over and over and over again and it's also too like I was so in like a state of like terror and fear that it also gave me something to like focus on and um just take myself out of the fear and just focus on learning this learning this learning this and that's the way i chose to do things for myself and that might not work for everybody but that's how i chose to do it and yeah so let me get to the video i'm gonna do like two sections of the video and I don't know we'll just see how it goes okay so I'm gonna get up and I'm gonna wash my hands and then I'm gonna come back but it's just gonna show like a cut so the first thing that you have to do is wash your hands so let me go do that and I will be back okay so now that I'm washing my hands I am um my nurse, well, she would tell me, no jewelry, no nails. And I told her, like, I understand we're not supposed to have nails, but back then I used to have, like, really long nails, and I love having my nails on, but I don't have them because of quarantine. 
um, and I haven't gone to the nail salons and my nail girl she's like my queen but I haven't had her over to do my nails because it's just like is it really a risk I'm willing to take you know for the nails it's been a very big like compromise but um it's something I haven't had in my life lately but I told her I'm not gonna take my nails off I understand that that's something that's like better for me to do but it's not a choice that I'm willing to make because having ph and all that stuff it was something about myself that i loved always and i still love and um i'm just not willing to not have acrylic nails so that's not good about me but that's just who i am as a person and so i told her like i'm never gonna not have nails so she was just like okay well if that's your choice that's fine just make sure that you sanitize extra you know before you do anything so i don't have my nails on right now but right now normally i would like sanitize my hands get in my nails the acrylics and like rub it around and get them extremely clean but yes my nurse was like don't do that you don't need those and i was like i understand i need them <laughs> so then next i would get my alcohol bag and the trash i just throw like in a section and then I put it down in the center of the table and then I make a big circle from the center going out. And basically you're just sanitizing your space. Keep my hands up and free. And the one thing I forgot to tell you guys before is that make sure you're not around a vent. Look around you, no vent there's no f blowing fans and also like right now usually I don't talk like this and I've never worn a face mask to do my medication it's not something I've ever done and it's not nothing that I am going to choose to do other people do and that's their choice and um, usually I'm not speaking during this time but you know we're gonna live a little today so I want to get a better angle so I think what I'm gonna do is kind of like cut my face out of this Daisy come here okay. I'm gonna have my daughter push the camera down a little bit so if it cuts off my head or my face like sorry about that yes. you're gonna grab that handle in the front, handle in the front. yeah and um, open your sheet and just let it fall. Never shake it or add air to it. Okay. Yeah, right there is good. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna push back my hair. Yes, I know. Okay, right now I would sanitize again, of course, because I touch my hair. Okay, so what I do is I get everything out of the packaging and onto the sterile drape. So, first I like to do things that aren't open and they're... I use sterile diluent for remodeling. Then I always open my cassette next. And I place it on the edge. And I hold and I hold this. Because this is what I dump my excess fluid in. Okay. So next I I carry my alcohol pads in here. So I get one, two, three, out. I keep my medication in a glass, a short jar, um, I mean a short glass like this, and I have a permanent marker, my medication, and my penny or whatever you're gonna use is always in there. I used to have an amazing coin, but it ran away from me, so now I have this. This is bubble wrap that I made like a little comforter for my medicine. And next I'm going to have my 
tubing on the side. I don't open that. Vials, syringes, whatever. Out of the trash. Needle. Trash goes in the little bucket. Needle. Then um, my medication vial. First, I grab the medication, and this isn't in my brain because this is open. I want to have that covered as fast as possible. So, alcohol pad to the top of the medication, 20 seconds. I'll probably fast forward the 20 seconds. <laughs> I take seven milliliters of fluid, so I will pull to the seven, put it on the top, and what I do, I'm gonna come forward, is some fluid will always fall in the chamber. I like when that happens. And then I push. And then what I do is I pull out a little bit of fluid. And what it does for me is it creates less bubbles. So I'll push that fluid up to where there's no bubbles at all. And then I pull down to the seven. So it looks like I just had just enough. See how there's bubbles on the top? So what I do is I grab my finger and I smack it. And I'll create one big bubble at the top. I'll try to get you to see the big bubble. That's what I create. So then I push that bubble out, and then I'll pull down till I get to my number, and then there's no bubbles in there. See, so now I'm at seven, and now I'm correct. So now I untwist medication, open this immediately, And place the medication into the cassette and to me it feels better because this is no longer open to the air it's already closed off so now check my seven milliliter correct and I push that into the remodulin I mean I push the remodulin into the cassette and then clamp put this aside and now I'm gonna top my medication that I have left, which is like just a little drop, but it's okay. When I'm opening the medicine, I always make sure that the top, I'm grabbing the top. So I'll shove over the plastic, pinch it, and pull to grab over the top. Let me try to get that close. So what I do is I open it, I pinch the medic this on the outside, open this, and then I'll hold it with the plastic and then pinch it with the plastic. See, holding it with plastic, pull it off and then grab the top. So now that I have the top, place it on the medication and you're done with that and everything is still closed, which I like. Then I do diluent. 
Oh, you can grab from there. You can grab from here. 20 seconds. Rubbing on the top. Don't be shy. Rub it hard. 20 seconds. I'll probably fast forward through this. Grab the top. Remove needle. Place it in here. Use the force of the table. Hold it. Push down. Push and you're getting all that air in there. And just let it fill up. Push it down. And just let it fill up. And slowly pull your needle out. And then this is trash. It goes in a little trash plastic bucket bin. Whatever. Put my needle cover all the bubbles in the bottom I'll hold it standing up and one hit very hard and it'll kick up all the bubbles to the top so then I what I do is I pull to make sure all the bubbles come down and then I push slowly push push right over my plastic trash bag until I get to 50. And then do the other one. Top. Hold the top with your two fingers. I always hold the top with my fingers here and I push with the bottom and I don't touch this you're not supposed to make sure you never touch your needle And then like to lay it to the side long ways and then roll so that you catch any bubbles if you have any other ones. If you don't see anything, you're doing good. But it's very normal to have bubbles. So now I'll push over my little plastic bucket until I get to reduced 7 milliliters. So 5, 6, 7. So now I put it down and that's my diluent. So now what I do is I grab my trash bin and I switch places with my cassette. Open my cassette. I'm, I'm gonna open and put this on kind of quick because I, in my brain, I'm just like, the less open it is, the better. Never touching the actual nozzles or connectors. Pinch between my finger. Open. That is a hand gesture that I learned and now my hands are strong enough to do it. When I first started, they weren't strong enough to do it, but now they are. push in all the diluent, it'll be hard. Then you put the cassette down, clamp. Make sure you clamp. When you push down, I hold the cassette in between my two fingers and I use another finger for support. I push down and I clamp with this hand. Then I put it to the side and I'm gonna switch fast. So it's a clamped open finger this 
middle finger and thumb take off the needle and I put, then am able to use my two fingers. Sometimes you'll get a drop full out, that's okay. Then I unclamp, use the force of the table, hold on tight to the top, put it in between my index and thumb and use my middle finger for support. With my hand, I will push the bottom of this, not touching the plunger or your index fingers. So I'm holding down with my, whole, my right arm and I'm gonna clamp. Okay, so there you go. So now you end up with a cassette full of bubbles and full of fluid. There's a big bubble. Okay, let me show you what to do. So now here's the cassette. Oh, it's like shiny. Okay, so you got your big bubble, and you got your little bubble. So now you're gonna mix your medication. I like to do 20 times slow. You don't wanna go fast, cause then you're gonna create more bubble. Okay, so now your medication's mixed. Now you got tons of bubbles in there. Let me try to change the camera angle. Okay, so now what we do is we put it on this cup and I am going to put the hook, the hook side down, facing down. I hope it like, okay, I have this facing down on the cup. Right, okay, I'm gonna put it down now I'm going to hold the plunger and I'm going to, since the bubble's on the top, release and all that fluid will come up. And what I do is I actually collect some of the fluid in here. All this is medication, don't forget. So now I have a little bit of medication and an empty cassette. So now we what my nurse said burp the baby so what I like to look at is there is a folds there is a fold on the bottom of the cassette the fold will go it'll bend one way or the other my fold is bended this way if you can see it so what I like to do is I turn it this way because then the fold will hold bubbles on the very bottom and when you hit the bottom of it the bubbles will come up to the top. So the fold is super important to pay attention to in the cassette. And this is what I mean. The plastic will go down one way or face another way. So if your plastic is facing down, that's good. So then we're gonna try to get the bubbles from the bottom to the top. So here's what I do, then I get that. And then you burp the baby. So you bang it, drop. And then you drop, drop, drop. And that's not, it's very loud. The dogs don't like it. And then you'll get this. These bubbles will all come to the top. So now, hooks facing down. Let's add some of that fluid back in. Slowly, 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 watch. Take your bubble add the fluid back in, make a small bubble, very small. I like to keep it medium size, not huge, not small. And then being mindful of the fold, you, I like to say like sweep the, sweep the floor. So sweep all the bubbles. See how they're coming off? See? And sometimes you wiggle it around to clean it up, to clean all the bubbles up. 
and then you end up with a good case. Make sure you check under here for bubbles that hide underneath here. If you're looking at it this way, you're not gonna see them. Make sure you check the side because there's always some on the side. See how there's some there? So then you bring that bubble down. And then you bring it back up and then they're gone, see? So now you end up with your one bubble. And I, this is what I do, hold the plunger at the top. Don't touch the plunger area still. Release the air and it will slowly come through the top of the tubing and create a little well. And then you're done with the medication. So from here, what I'll do, open tubing. Tubing to me is a safe item because it's closed on both ends. So once you get this onto this, you're safe. This little section in the tubing is to remove bubbles. So this will always go towards your port on the top section. Never on the bottom, on the top towards your body. Then you pull this and then the end comes and I always do this I don't know why I just do I can put this down and put it down pinch with my two fingers and it's that same handle that I I use all the time now my finger is strong enough to do it it wasn't before but now it is so I pinch here and I open Remove the cap. Switch hands. And close. See, now I feel safe because my medication is closed. So now I can move this away. And I can go onto the pump. So let me try to switch camera angles back to the way it was before. Okay. So... Here's the weird shot. Sorry, I do all this by myself, so I'm trying to learn the best angles and stuff. But, um, so now we are on to the pump. And got my pump, it's off. So what I do is I make sure I have my coin, whatever. And before I even turn on the pump, I remove the safety. And then I place the medication on the pump. Then I lay it flat and I turn it on. Hold it and then I let go. So now you will get your settings. See, this is high pressure. That means sometimes that the tubing has too much fluid on the inside. So as soon as I let go, it's going to be fine. So let's turn it off. One, two, three. So now it's off. So now, because sometimes there's a lot of fluid in the little um, straw that the sensor feels, it'll feel too much pressure so it'll ring. So now let's turn it, we remove the clamp tubing and so now let's turn it on again. Normally that doesn't happen but sometimes it does.
Okay, so now your machine is happy. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to prime your tubing. So now you grab the end of your tubing and you, I like to lay it flat because it's easy for me. I wish, let me try to get it better. There. I like to lay mine flat on the ground, on the, and then I hit prime, hold it down. You'll see one, two, three. That just allows it to get in that mode. Then you have to push it down again for the prime to actually happen. And since I already removed my disposable, uh, I mean my clamp, that it's able to flow freely. Normally I would remove the clamp and then prime, well prime. Hold it down again. And hold it down again. You're gonna wanna prime until you see medication dropping. There we go, see? Now let go. Since this is still closed, I still feel safe. So I like to dabble off like some medication on the sterile drape and then go to my start and hit start. One, two, three. There you go. Reservoir volume, continuous rate. I'm at, um, my pump rate is 45 and it goes through all of its checks and then it shows run. So right now you have an active running case with your medication. So now it's time to switch your pumps. Mine is in my course, Fanny Pack Queen, my snail shell right here. So I'll take it and I will get it out. And this is how I keep track of my uh, cassettes. This, I wrote a number three. I don't know if you can see it. Let me see it right there. There's a number three and it says Friday. So that means that I changed my batteries and my um, hub on the third time. So now I'll start back at one again. So I will write on my pump a number one and Friday, I changed my medication. So today is Friday. Friday, I'll sleep with it. Saturday, I will sleep with it. And then Sunday, I will change my medication. So I write Sunday on my medication cassette. And if you're gonna ask me, why don't you have your stickers? And why don't you write your um, pump rate and medication and all of those things? I used to have the stickers with the Valitri, but when I switched to Remodulin, I didn't have stickers that have um, the dosage and all of those things that, have, that I used to use with my Valitri. So that's just the way it happened. I don't know why specifically or not. Um, but it's worked for me and I don't have a problem with it. And even during my emergency when like I had my tubing cut, um, I didn't have problems with, you know, getting people the correct medication and stuff like that. In other emergencies, it's important to have that. Yes, I understand. I'm just telling you this is why this video is going to be controversial because things like the sticker can really, really, um, trigger some people that I don't have it and I don't want to do that. I'm just trying to share how I've been doing it and this is how I've been doing it. So, no, I don't have stickers. I write one, two, and three. So next pump change, I will write a number two. Then the next pump change, when I see that it's going to be the third time, I will switch batteries, hub, and um, tubing like always, but I switch tubing always. So batteries and a hub will be changed on three so i write sunday and it's going so now i lift my shirt Ooh, skin everybody and i clamp 
clamp and then I hold the, the blue hub I use the blue ones and then I un attach and then I with the one finger method again and then I pull the top up twist on and now I just tighten so yes I'm used to using this one finger a lot now at first it was very hard and painful and my finger wasn't strong unclamp and you're done you're now hooked up to your running machine so now this one I will put in my fanny pack for now and put here on my lap so now here's what we do with the running pump it's still running you're gonna hold your finger on stop hold it down okay so now it's stopped you're gonna go to next to the reservoir volume and then with the top arrow you're going to fill, mine's at seven, I'm going to fill it all the way to 100. So now my reservoir is at 100. So now I'm going to enter that figure. So now I'm going to push next. Continuous pump rate is 45, none of that is changing. So I'm going to hit next again and it'll show what it has given. So it's given me 90.55. So I'm going to clear that. So put your finger on clear and hold it down. And then it'll show double zeros. Then you go to next and it'll take you through the settings. And I like to go through the settings and make sure it's correct. Reservoir 100. Continuous rate same 45 given zero correct So now you're done resetting your uh, machine. So now you turn it off one two Three Now it's off so now you can remove your old cassette with your coin And always place your sensor protector back I always have mine some people don't use it some people think it's BS but for me it's super important so I always put it back on and put your quarter or coin back into your cup that's what I do and then I put my medication back in my cup and my oops my permanent marker back in my cup so this and this and you're done so now I will, keep, I usually keep mine in a basket, but I'm, I didn't for this like video. So now you're safely connected and you're finished with your other. Now what I would suggest, let me try to change this oh. angle. Okay. I don't know how this eye is looking. I hope it looks decent. I hope I don't look like a crazy person. Okay. So now that's how I changed my pump from the last thing I suggest is definitely go into your phone. Mine is my Disney. And what I do is I go straight to my alarms. And I will reset my Remodulin alarm. So this is my Remodulin alarm. This is the time I change it. And I will set it for Sunday. So set it to my phone for Sunday. And then I will hit save because without an alarm and no one to tell you when to change your medicine, sometimes it's easy to forget. So after I set my alarm, then I feel safe to like clean my area and throw my trash. But that is how I change my medicine. Um, this is a super long video and there's going to be lots of like, well, I don't do this. I do that. Like, and well, that's not good. And this is bad. And this is why. And and I'm open for all of those, you know, um, opinions and suggestions in the comments. You know, education to me is knowledge. 
and it doesn't mean that there's a right or wrong way to do it i mean of course dealing with this kind of stuff there's there's definitely wrong things but um there's always going to be little tweaks that other people do different and just please be open-minded about that this is just for the people that continue to ask me to make the video about how i do it this is how i do it um i've been making iv therapy for five years going six years something like that i don't remember exactly but it's been a very long time and this is just part of my life and i've never ever gotten um line infection due to the way i make medication or any kind of problems due to the way that i make medication so this has been a very you know tedious video i hope you guys like it please like and subscribe to my channel i'm trying really hard to grow the channel for all of us phers to have somebody relatable in our ph community but um yeah share it to your other ph friends and please help me grow my channel but anyway um thank you so much for watching and taking time this is a super long video i know and um i'm your ph friend from texas and i'll see you in the next video bye